Whether or not Samsung's created the best gaming monitor is up for debate, of course. One thing's for certain, it is definitely one of the most polarizing monitors to be released in the last few years. 1440p, 240Hz, one millisecond response time. But then you've got this very controversial curve that you either love or you hate. And it's got a VA panel, which comes with the, the usual worries of ghosting and backlight bleed and uh, viewing angles as well. It has most potential buyers, like yourselves, torn between should you buy it, should you not buy it. Now, I'm sure that by the time you've got to this video, you have already seen hardware unboxed detail review and Linus Tech Tips reviews on this game. If you haven't seen those yet, I recommend to see those first, links in the description. If you find yourself coming to this video even after watching those reviews and still feeling like you're not quite decided on whether you should buy this monitor or not, I'm going to break it down simply in layman terms what's good and what's bad about this monitor and help you decide on whether you should buy or you should not buy this one. Let's talk about the biggest concerns first, ghosting. Now, I have tried this monitor in several different scenarios. I tried the alien UFO test. After flicking through all the different overdrive settings in terms of response time, I cannot notice any significant ghosting issues. This panel is actually very good. How does it perform in games? Well, I've been playing Warzone extensively. I do not notice any issues in any of the different settings. From my point of view, Playing in either standard fast, fastest, or fastest motion blur reduction modes makes absolutely no difference. The panel does absolutely brilliant. The colors are great. Speed, response time, 240 hertz, it feels brilliant for competitive gaming. Take it one step further and play a game like Doom Eternal, where you can really test the monitor's speed and response time. Again, cannot notice any ghosting, any issues with this panel. In fact, thoroughly impressed by how fast and responsive uh, and just absolutely buttery smooth panel um, feels while playing such a fast paced game. You can also notice how brilliant the colors are in this panel. With HDR on, the, the, the colors and the views in, in uh, that, that satanic setting that is Doom Eternal, brilliant. But coupled with the speed that you, you move around in that game that, that this monitor allows you to do with, with its high refresh rate and high response time, brilliant experience. Again, I have not had any concerns. In if I go over to a more visual game, uh, I tested Total War Three Kingdoms. This is a game more suited to an IPS panel. It's colorful, it's, it's got vibrant different maps and, and it's got all sorts of different, different settings in, in terms of going from the uh, high level strategy view to the battle mode. Colors are vibrant, are, are beautiful. The, it's, it's a pleasure playing the game on this monitor from a colors perspective. And just moving around the map uh, with speed, you can really see the effects of the high refresh rate and response time during playing this game as well. So all in all, in terms of playing games and general usage around uh, Windows, uh, even some productivity ticks the box for me in terms of speed of the panel and the response time. As far as colors go from a technical point of view, it does tick all the boxes in terms of the specs, 100% sRGB coverage. And Samsung actually has a calibration report of the tests they do before they send out the panels out of the factory, which I think is, is, is great. So ticks all the boxes in terms of response time, fresh rate, colors, it really does do very well, even though it's a VA panel in terms of all of those areas. So what's bad about this? You do have a problem with backlight bleed. I've tested this in several scenarios and the bleed uh, or black uniformity is, isn't great. And this seems to be a common problem for all users across the board, which you will get with the VA panel. I will say, however, me being a layman and an average user, I do not notice much of an issue whilst playing games, watching movies. It's only when it gets to a very d dark scenario, maybe some of the settings in Doom Eternal, maybe some, some movies that are darker in their settings, but very minimal, not to the point where it's making me think 
I need to return this panel. So the other um, potential bad thing is the viewing angles. Now, for me, this is not a problem. I mean, I've bought this monitor for me to sit in front of it and use it. Um, I'm not really moving around much to, to look at it. it. It's not a problem for me, but uh, if, um, if you want to use the monitor in a different setting where you want to see it from different angles, then it's actually not that bad, even, even when looking at it from different angles. The viewing angles are not bad on this panel. The curve, yes, it's polarizing. You either love it or hate it. For me, not a problem. I find the curve actually more immersive. I can understand that being a problem in certain scenarios. For example, the desk layout. Now, if you have a straight desk and you're putting your monitor in the middle of your desk and you want to nicely set up the curve, might not look the best. Now, for me, having a corner setup like I have here, uh, the, the curved monitor is absolutely perfect for this. But I will recommend trying to go out there and test this for yourself before buying it because it can be polarizing. You will either love it or you will hate it. That's for sure. Final thing is the stand. I mean, the general build quality is brilliant on this monitor. It's uh, obviously it's a Samsung um, product, so it's going to be very good. But the stand is rather large. So to conclude, why would you buy it? Well, I love the 1000R curve. I'd buy it just because I love the curve so much. So I highly recommend trying to get, uh, I know it's difficult in current uh, climate, but I'd recommend having a look at these monitors in person and deciding for yourself whether you like it or you don't like it. That will be a deciding factor. Second point is this monitor is blazingly fast. All those reviews out there, all those technical details, they're true. This thing is very fast and it has overcome most of the VA panel ghosting issues whilst doing all of that. So it takes the box in terms of how fast it is. Third reason you should buy this monitor is well, the looks. It's, it's a gorgeous monitor. I mean, the build quality, the RGB, the bezel, it's a beautiful panel. Okay, so why should you not buy it? You will notice the backlight view. Apart from that, there is seriously nothing else I can pick out in this monitor that would make me think twice about buying it. Now, when I look at the backlight feed, I do think, well, if I had picked up um, an IPS panel of some sort uh, and compromised a little bit on the refresh rate, I would have probably done a bit better, maybe. But you're talking about a 5% or 10% difference maybe in your experience of... Uh, of playing or enjoying your monitor. For me, this is not a big issue, but if you are particular about backlight bleed and, and its applications or, or will notice it more in your applications, it's certainly going to bother you. So after listening to all of that, if you decide not to buy one of these monitors, well, what could you buy? There's only, in my opinion, four other options in terms of a 1440p, 240Hz, very fast, gaming slash productivity monitor. The top of the range, two IPS panels would trade blows with this monitor are the Alienware AW2721D and the Gigabyte Aorus F127Q-X. To see more detailed reviews of these monitors, there's links in the description for the channels that have done some really good reviews on these. If you want the absolute fastest monitor, but the HP Omen X27 is your choice. And you may now be able to get that at a bit of a cheaper price given it's been out for, for quite a while now. Fourth option, if you're really feeling adventurous, then the Kickstarter company EVE Spectrum Monitor is uh, quite an eye-catching spec sheet and a very nice design, simple design. It looks brilliant, but uh, I highly recommend checking out Linus's review on that particular monitor, link in the description. So that's it for now. I hope you found this video useful. Subscribe, describe, and uh, let us know if you would like to see anything else on this monitor in future reviews. Thank you very much for watching.